to the, the desk. Okay, there we go. And let me say I got it here. You can see that. Okay. Oh, here's Jackie. Mm -hmm. So my hope was I could get those earbuds working so that um, I could. Um, Uh, because all my sounds coming over from the side. So if I look over to the side, that's what's happening. The sound is sort of throwing me over here, but I, I do have a camera in front of me. So do, do we want to wait a little bit longer or? Uh, no, I think, I think you can start. I think we got a good okay. group here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to mute everybody, first of all, and then uh, we'll unmute uh, Jeff. Let's see okay. here. So, so I'll be away from my computer, so I won't be able to get any chat questions or anything like that, but just go ahead and shout out, and I think I'll be able to answer everything. Yeah, I'll take care of the chats. So. Okay. 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 So I've muted everybody. Now we have to ask Jeff to unmute. There. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we'll okay. go forward and uh, Jeff will tell us what he what he does and uh, what he's going to do. I don't know if you've okay. read the, the rules of public speaking. In public speaking, you tell people what you're going to do, tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you had, what you told them, so. <laughs> okay, uh, we're, we're gonna repeat ourselves a lot, I guess. Yes, yes, <laughs> okay. the way people remember. Well, this, this isn't what I'm going to do that's right in front of you. This is um, just an example of what I've done outside. And I wanted my presentation to be about um, simulating a uh, plein air experience sort of in the studio. And uh, I, um, I mean, just a little bit about my background. I, my wife and I, we, I, we do illustration. So I do a lot of... Um, in the studio work anyhow. And the whole reason I started doing plein air was to get outside and enjoy nature and move around. And um, that, that's sort of where this all began. And then I really fell in love with it. I, the influences are for me are Joseph Zabukic, um, even Keiko Tanabe um, uh, influence and Al Alvaro, which I don't think my work is like Alvaro's, but, um, and Chin Chung Wee is very important to me. So, um, if you look at any of them up, I mean, that's my, I think what I do kind of, I take bits and pieces from them. Um, uh, one thing I think about, uh, I realized I was doing some prep for this and um, I realized like how different it is for me because now I'm used to painting outside when I paint and, um, and painting from a photo seemed very, very limiting. And I wanna show you this, this is something I did not too long ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago up in um, Newport. Um, but this is the sketch I did before I did this. And usually I do this. Um, and sometimes if I have the time, I do like a little value study that would look like, let me find one. Oh, maybe I don't have one. <laughs> well, here's one I did, like a value study to know like what shapes I can put together. I just had a workshop with Andy uh, Evenson, another influence on me. And I really recommend um, doing anything with him. And I think what he, he does, and I was sort of doing it before, I've painted a lot in oil as well before I uh, got into doing plein air in watercolor and and I had done note and sketches um, and I did one for the exercise that we're gonna do and I'll show it to you. But the whole idea behind it is that we wanna know what forms we can uh, link together. And, you know, just thinking about the difference between like a camera and, um, and working from a photo, you know, the camera is just all the detail. It re it's just recording what it perceives and everything is sort of with the same um, amount of attention in a sense, unless you know you have lenses and you can do something special with it, but there's no hierarchy. And I think with painting, it's sort of because we can't be a camera, 
or especially in plain air, you're limited in your time. I mean, you know, the camera is like a moment, but when you're out there plain air painting, it's like an hour and a half or two hours and your people come by, the light changes, you spill your water, you know, things happen. So, um, uh, and let's see, uh, let's see what I want to say, but it, the hierarchy, I think for this begins with a sketch. It begins with uh, figuring out like, you know, what's, what's important in a scene. And I think in this, it was these umbrellas and the light here and the diffuseness of, of this uh, building here. And then just these verticals. So usually it's, I think it comes down to just a few things. It might be like an area uh, that, you know, causes attention, or it could just be how things work together too, that makes you kind of interested in doing it. But, but once it grabs you, you got to figure out how do you grab what you're seeing. And so, and I think it all begins with the sketch. So let me put these aside. So here we go. This is, this will look familiar to you now. So this is the, uh, this is the, this is the uh, photo that I sent you. And I think it would be difficult to paint along. And I realize this is a really difficult painting to attempt in a demo just because there's a lot of cutting around, you know, I, I really like the fact that, um, um, in this photograph, there was, oh, I don't have room for this one. Let's see. No, I think I, in this photograph, there's, you know, there's a lot to cut around because I want to preserve these whites and, but that's why I liked it. And in terms of this area, I just really love these three things happening right here. And I love the motion in this person. I'll back off a little bit. Oh, please tell me if I if I put my head in the uh, <laughs> in the uh, screen. So, but but just focusing on what you like, and I I think I like the reflections. I like that, and I like maybe I sort of like the atmosphere here. So that's what I'm going to try and get from this. And here's the uh, I did a little note and sketch, Jeff, so I could think you, Jeff. Pardon? We got a we got a question in chat. Oh, sure. How do you know whether to do a horizontal or vertical format? I think it's the same kind of intuition that draws you to the uh, the scene, and I think it's about once you figure out like I like this, then I think the other question would be, uh, okay, what? How do I accentuate that? You know, does it fit better in a vertical or a horizontal? And I think that would answer that question. And for this, I wanted to get some of the background. So I, I wanted to kind of go sideways. I'm going to do, uh, this is 16 by 14. And the reason why I didn't do like a, a four by three sort of format is I didn't want this going to the edge. You see how this kind of comes to the edge in this photograph? Like I didn't want that to happen. I want it so... Um, so I wanted to, so I mixed, you know, uh, made it uh, a higher format this way so that this would be going off the edge here. So that's, that's why I did that. That's why I picked that. So it's compositional reasons. Um, but now the reason I did this is so that uh, every time you do a sketch or anything, you're practicing doing uh, some aspect of your painting before you do it. And it, so it helps you plan. And I've been calling these things um, uh, MVP. So it's middle value pattern. So a middle value, I, um, this is just a little, uh, I think I have 10, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 uh, separations of value here. You could use seven. Um, it doesn't really matter, but the concept of this is that um, when I paint, I try and the, when I kill the whites on my paper and that first layer that I'm making, it's usually I'm taking care of these uh, light layers. And the middle value is really the rest of it. 
this all, the darker values will go back and accent them. And, but the middle value is basically what I put in here. So this air, these values in this light section are sort of white in my sketch here. I haven't touched them, but the shadow of objects where light isn't hitting, um, uh, that's the middle value. And why this is imp important for me to do in some pieces is it shows me what I can link together in terms of like this big shape here, I really like. It gets really complicated here, but I like I have some big shapes here that define these, help you know push these out. And I really needed to go a little, I need to go a little darker here so that these come out. So that's why I did that. Um, so a, a lot of my work, um, when I took the workshop with Chin Chung Wee was about variety and sort of depicting nature in a way that, um, that, it, that nature is. And there's not a lot of sameness in nature. I mean, even, even with perspective, if you, know, you have big fence posts, they all don't look the same. Like sometimes, because you know, they're going back into space, the one closer to you is, um, is bigger and then it gets smaller. And I, I know that in, when I'm setting up a, competition, uh, a composition, I look to make things different. Like if you look at these sails, um, like I try to make them going in different directions. I mean, if you look at that, like I'm, I'm consciously trying to make them different sizes, like the shapes. And I'm, I'm you know, so even the, the, these characters that I'm putting in, like I'm looking around for unique positions. Like I think that kind of variety helps. Like, and the variety of like line and dots and shapes, like anything you can make a shape with um, is good. That I, sometimes I even like the little splatter in something because the splatter is a dot. It's, and it's a different kind of uh, expression on the paper. So, so I'm, I'm really sort of about uh, the unity that I can get by big shapes and, and bringing stuff together and editing and simplifying. But you also want to have a whole meal of, of lines and dots and shapes and nothing too similar. So yeah. it's sort of like variety, but unity. So, I mean, I think those two things make a, a good design. Jeff, this is so, my question. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so basically, why don't you put that sketch back down the middle oh, value? Sorry. Yes. So clearly there is no mountain behind those sails in your reference yes. photo. So why right. did you decide to, to do that instead of say the the more varied and, and kind of nitpicky uh, background that you have in the photo? Right. Well, it's I think it has something to do with like uh, like two things. And remember I was talking about, I wanted these shapes to come forward and pop. And I wanted a, a dark behind them to do that. Now, of course, like, you know, when we draw, we're making lines, we're outlining something and that can sort of make something, you know, define something, but I'm trying to use a value to go up against this white that makes it pop forward. And also it's that, um, like, I, I guess I always think of the big picture about, um, you know, different types of composition types you know how you have the S type of composition and you have, and this is from uh, Edgar Payne's, um, there's a book and he, he goes through them. There's, you know, there's different types, you know, maybe like an H type or, and he might call it, uh, I, I, he has a name for it, like steel, but it's like a, a balance of two things. And there's, there's many different types. And I kind of think, here, like I'm trying to get like a diagonal coming, you know, I, was, I think I was trying to use this as a way to create motion in the, um, in, in this composition, just to have that diagonal cutting through these that are going up and the value that up against the white. So it was having a dual purpose. So that, I hope that answers your question. And a lot of times, you know, these, uh, you have a, several of these working in a composition 
at the same time in some ways because I have this big triangle shape here. I have this, but yet I'm trying to do, you know, some of this too. So I'm trying to have some kind of S going on. So, okay, so um, I'm just gonna start drawing or I'm not gonna finish in time. <laughs> So a lot of times in a field, I do something like this and I show you the other thing. And then I, I basically quarter it off and I'll just do that with this as well. So I just do that on a couple sides and I've gotten pretty good at this. I think, you know, sort of my idea, how I trained myself is, you know, you decide what you wanna, the kind of paintings you wanna make and you train yourself to do that. And you train yourself I think by, um, you know, forcing yourself to do things you might be uncomfortable with, uncomfortable with in the beginning, but um, little by little, you sort of gain those skills of doing it. And this has been like my way of, you know, doing a sketch and transferring this sketch to this. And maybe I'll move this over just a bit so I can put this down. There, can you see both okay? Looks like it. Okay, so the middle of this sketch, you know, the middle here, middle is right there. It looks like it's right about on the edge of this mask and it coming at this angle. And I'll just match that angle. And this, it goes down a bit and it goes up. And it goes up just a little bit past this mark. So that's about it right there. So already I've kind of have my first, you know, the placement of my first thing. And I try to, the best I can, um, use, uh, keep my pencil on the paper. And I make a lot, I, I sort of make a lot of lines. And now my, my eye is gonna be jumping from this, which is proportions and my scene here, you know, um, I did like, the, I like the shape of, oh, this, this sail and this boat. I really like that. And I'm gonna put that in the front. That's what this is. But I like the sail, uh, how the light's hitting this. And I like the position of this. If you can see this, he's uh, someone, a, a boy sitting right next to the boat and he has his legs in the boat, pulling the boat up. I really like that. And I like her. So I'm sort of jumping, and I like this, this uh, girl in a boat sailing off. So I'm sort of taking pieces and I'm not sure if this has happened to you, if you plein air paint, if you're interested in it, but. <laughs> Um, a lot of times when I, when I need something to happen, someone, it always, someone always shows up and kind of gets into my painting and um, it's very helpful. So now I'm looking up over here to get this coming down. And now I'm just gonna focus in on what that boat looks like. Jeff, what kind of pencil are you using? What eight hardness? It, I think it's a, it's a two or a three B. Okay. And a lot of times it's like, I'm trying to go very, very light. I'm not trying to, I'm sort of jumping around. And one reason I sort of like doing this, um, it, well, for one thing, I'm not making anything that's really, really harsh. Hopefully you can see it. As soon as I go through this whole thing with a light line, I'm gonna come back and I'll go darker and, and refine some things. But really I'm just looking for uh, what would be a, uh, uh, the placement, you know, given this. So I have a little boat up here, I'm just gonna, and I wanted to put a person in here and this motor boat. This is what the teacher, um, just the story that goes with this. Um, oops, I think I need to move this up quite a bit. Sometimes I, I erase, sometimes I don't. I think it's, sometimes the lines, uh, they're just gonna disappear anyhow, so I don't have to get too uh, fussy about them. But um, I was in Point Loma these pictures and I saw these sailboats, there's no people out there. And um, I started setting up my gear. Like I got my easel out and I was all set up, ready to go. And then all of a sudden these kids show up at this um, and 
they just start loading in the boats and sailing away. So I had to drop everything I was doing and just start photographing them. <laughs> and I got these. And so this seemed like a good exercise to do for um, a demo because uh, I could, I, there was no way I could paint it live. So I'm just jumping over. I'm going to take this and try to encode. I, I sort of like that all these lines are sort of converging. And I like that this is giving us a, you know, just it keeps us from going off the edge here. So and I'm just going to pretend there's a boat over here. And I'm going to abstract this. A lot of times I do this when I'm not really sure um, what I'm going to put in, in the place or it's, or it's too much detail or something. I'll try to abstract it. Okay. And, and maybe this will be a sail. I don't have to get too much detail. Now I'm just going to come up here and I'm looking for the top of this hill. And it's going to come down. I wanted this to break that. So I'm just going to stretch this up a little bit. Maybe I'll bring it down. Okay. And then there's going to be some mass like this in the corner. And a lot of times when I'm draw, um, it's really about indication. Like I, I, I'm going to make some little um, rectangles and that's just going to remind me that I need to leave some spaces. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. And where's my little person right there? And even the space between um, when I do this, uh, whatever this, uh, what, what, it, Ralph? Do you know what these are called? These pylon things that stick up out of a dock. Well, the whole dock in place and so forth. Uh, no, I don't know what the name of that is. <laughs> it's called the un, unnamed pylons in some sort. Py We're just going to call them a pylon. So, um, anyhow, uh, I I sort of. Like this sail over here. Oh, maybe you can't see it. I sort of like how the sail kind of intersects with this. So I want to put that one in. So there. basically, you're not you're using your reference photos just as a takeoff point for your for your painting. You're not being yes. religious about it. Right. And I, I think remember I was trying to simulate what hap what I do outside. And when I'm outside, I'll look. Over there and go, oh, I like that tree. I'm going to move it over, or I'm going to take that and move it over. And so I like practicing the same. Remember, I, I think that's why I was bringing up like, you know, train for the artist you want to be, train for the paintings you want to make. And I want to have, I want to be able to do that outside. And when I lock in and do a, a photo and I, and I lock myself into replicating everything in the photo, you know, it kind of shuts off that more, that part of me. And I just follow that. And I don't, and I didn't want to do that. Um, and so um, I hope that makes sense. I even like this line. Um, see how this line here is, is going towards this. My, my central character is going to be over here. And see that I'm almost like using other lines to point to her. I really like how that, you know, sets up. And I'm maybe. A, Put another person here. Okay, so here let me finish this one. My my last little thing. This little sailboat. I'll bring it down a little bit. Okay, and then I think I sort of want to jump to our main character here, and I think I'm going to scoot her over so that she's against the white so that if I make her um, like a dark color, uh, she'll really pop against that. I'm using contrast to help um, form her. And one thing in terms of, you know, doing people, like once I sort of put in the bulk of her body and maybe her head, I definitely want to get her, uh, you know, usually I try and get a foot underneath to establish balance, you know, so her weight, uh, if you go right down from the head to where her foot is, and, and two, I try and get the, uh, about like seven, um, 
uh, head lengths, you know, for the, to get like the proper proportion of head to body. I think that's, uh, but I really love her posture here. So I really want to try and spend a little time to get that. Okay. Now this pencil is pretty crude and it's really about for me placement. And so I'm going to stop here. And I think I'm going to make her higher. I think I put her in the wrong, I went, that happens. <laughs> so I think that's a better placement because I noticed like she's above this. And so that's the edge of the dock here. And I think I'm gonna just put another person, you know, messing with this boat that's behind her, maybe in the water. So I'm gonna put the sail up a little higher. Jeff, we have a couple questions. Yep, uh-huh. Uh, so one is, uh, how do you adjust for the uh, moving shadows that you, you have? Uh, I mean, if you were to stand there for several hours, the shadows would move quite a bit. And of course the boats might move and the people might move and so forth. How do you adjust I, for that? How do you deal with that? I think it's, I think what happens is you, there's, um, what I'm trying to think, well, you, everything kind of follows the sense of your design. Like you figure out like, like what did I say was the most important thing to me was these sails. So, and I'm even, a, and, and this person and this reflection. So I tend to adjust to emphasize the thing that I'm most interested in. So like these shadows, there's gonna be shadows. Actually, I think they look good. They, it's almost like when I, when I put these shadows in, they're gonna be like arrows pointing to this area. You know, and it's, oh, another compositional model is a radial composition. And if I have these lines doing this, even this, look at this line pointing down to her, I'm creating a radial composition, all lines kind of coming to this area. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Let's, uh, let's segue to a separate, separate question. Several watercolor artists I respect have talked about uh, making sure that you have a story that you're telling that, uh, you know, the people have to be it's not just a set of shapes, but there's something happening with, you know, there's a story that needs to be told. What's, what's mm -hmm. the story here? Well, um, I, you know, it's, yeah, like I never think about telling a story. I think, I think it, huh, that's a really tough question for me to answer <laughs> well, because I don't think I set up, I think the story's already there. And if you leave it, if you tell, if you express the scene, I think people close that circle for you. Like I've made art, I've made art before and I haven't thought about a story, but someone will come up to me and go, oh, I saw this. And did you mean, did you, did you I, I took it this way. And so a lot of times you might think you're making a story, but once it's in the hands and minds of your audience, it can actually be something quite different than you think. So, okay. um, so don't agonize over the story. I, I don't. Be, um, it, I think the story is this woman in a sense, but I'm not, I'm not being didactic in anything about her um, yet, I guess, you know, okay. but uh, oh yeah, we have another woman over this woman. I think I like her. I think it's the same woman and she's over here. And I think I like, her being over here. So I'm just going to put her, I'm a little bit, uh, the eye level is above here. So she's not, her eye, her head won't line up with this woman. I'm not going to make her that tall. I'm going to make her a little shorter because we have perspective working here. And so, and I'll put her on, oh, she has her leg. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Okay, so I'm just going to switch now to like a, um, I think it's a 0.5 millimeter so that I can come in here and it's not gonna leave as much graphite. And so I can do sort of a, a little finer, um, uh, I think I might make her hand. And just so like finer lines. And so I'm not putting as much down and I can see what I'm doing. That's almost like too big. And I usually use this to kind of go over my whites. Like anything that I know I want to be, you know, white.
And so hopefully you can see some of these lines. There's some stuff in this uh, boat. So I'm making the lines just a little bit heavier. Now, this is a compositional mistake I just made and I, I just caught it. This is the, the deck, you know, the, the and it's called a continuous line and it went right into the sail. Did you, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So that would be visually confusing. So I need to stagger them in some way. So I think I'm just gonna bring this up like this, even though it might not be able to do that or. There might be an engineering reason why they wouldn't do that, but it doesn't matter because it's a picture, a, a painting. It's a picture. Well, it, it would just confuse my viewer, I think. So I just want to get rid of that. Okay. And this line is really, this is sort of important. And I think um, I want all my attention here. So I spend most of my time here. And sometimes the further I go out, the less I want to do. Okay, so I think, and then I wanna make some lines that represent the reflection because I said that was the other thing I was interested in. So I, want, I just wanna make some lines to help me know where these things are gonna be. Okay, so pretty squiggly and I'm gonna try and, you know, maybe I'll try and make the paint do the talking here. So um, I love these little, part of the rigging here too. So I wanna get that. Okay. So you got to, um, hopefully you got, uh, or if, in terms of the colors, my new colors that are different from my um, handout that, I, that Ralph sent you, where I have a quinacridone gold in here. And usually the first thing I do always is sort of give my colors a squirt down so that things are, are moist enough, especially outside when the wind's blowing. It's like you really need to do that enough. And I have this great tool, I love this. It, it allows you to hose down and add water so you don't have to go into your clean water too. Um, so uh, quinacridone gold and ultramarine turquoise. And usually I just try out a few new colors um, and I have a bad habit of putting a couple colors in one tin, like I have um, a horizon blue and a turquoise blue in this one. So, um, uh, and brushes, I'm gonna stick to probably to start with like uh, big mops is usually what I use. And then when I go to finer stuff, I'll, I'll sort of hop down to this size, so. What brand uh, of, of um brushes are those um i have this is a da vinci and i really love it for this point um that's it's great it does a lot because of that point but it can't do dry brushing very well so i use something with less of a point um these are a skoda and they're squirrel so they're real hair um they're very soft and so it's easy to do a broken stroke a skoda and this one's a goat hair and it's a, an italian brand uh, Tintoretto. So anyhow, and I just like it because I, I know how important it is to paint with a lot of light. So I'm just going to get going. A lot of times I try and make uh, several puddles of, of um, uh, several colors. And so that I can sort of, if I want to go a certain direction, um, I can just you know, grab a color and go, or dip, dip into it, and so I can go. Oops, well, yeah, let me do that. So um, this is a lavender here, and I'm sort of thinking that when I, if I'm using a yellow in the sky, I'm sort of putting a little lavender. I might even put just a, I'm, I'm sort of get, going to the lavender side of my blue so that they don't make a gr too much of a green when they hit. And um, maybe, and I'm just gonna make, this is sort of, um, this is my muck pile over here. I dump my colors on them sometimes at the end of the day and I squeeze them out into this pile. And so it's sort of, if I ever want to gray something down, I sort of can scoop up a little color from here. 
And I just want to have some, maybe a neutral-ish kind of colors in this. Some blue, a little alizarin crimson, a little burnt sienna, some cobalt. I'm going to squeeze this brush out. You know, I used to never touch my brushes or the hairs, but now I'm really used to it. And it's really handy. <laughs> so I'm just getting the dirt out of the brush. And um, I think I'm going to make like sort of more of a reddish brown over here. Just having colors that I can reach to really quick. Oops. Take that down. And usually I use. Um, the chalk colors are these pastel, I call them chalk colors. There's a little titanium white in them. And I sort of use them um, in the beginning, but uh, because they're a little opaque, um, they're going to, uh, if, you, if you go on top using them, you, sometimes if you use too much of it, I mean, it's great as an opaque, like if I wanna go into one of these bodies with a, a, a vertitier, it looks great, but if you do like try and wash with them, it's sort of, it looks a little hazy, which might be, might be what you want, but okay. So let me just make sure I got these, do that up a bit. Okay, so lots of water and I'm just gonna get started. So this is just to recap, I'm painting this section of values first. And um, so it's all basically wet and wet and wet. I'm just going to give a little little spritzer there. It might buy, buy me a little time. And I'm trying, and I need to do this really quick because, and these colors aren't in the, um, our design here. And I want more richer color there. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna add to that. Okay. Now, if I don't like that color very much, I'm just gonna keep hitting it with water. This is what I call the running wet, um, just before that runs. I'm gonna put some more yellow here. The more water you use, the more it's gonna fade just because you're um, what more yellow, not. So I'm just throwing some water. Now, if there's plenty of, it's gonna wash down. And so I'm not too worried. I think that's gonna be okay. So that's gonna fade a lot. And I put so much water, it's just flowing down here, so. So you have your desk tilted a little bit? Oh, that's great. I'm using Saunders paper and I'm tilted. Usually I tilt more than this. Uh, usually I tilt about uh, 35 degrees, 45, just about. And it, but um, usually it changes depending on what I'm painting and what layer. Sometimes I put it up more vertically later on and I'm using thick paint. But when I'm using paint like this, I sort of get a little, um, I, I have it less tilted because it buys me just a little bit, little bit of time. Okay. So just adding some of that gold over here. And it could be, I'm just, uh, it's important, I wanted you to see like, sometimes I'm always controlling how much water I have in my brush. And I just took that out so I could pick up some of this, this, uh, you know, at the bottom of this wash. And I like to refer to, you know, these washes and things as, um, it's like they're in stages. This is like a running wet because you can actually see it running down the paper and, and, as soon as it's a little bit stable, I could even add a little color. I, I switched my brush, if you notice, I went to a smaller brush and I just want a little sense of, you know, some 
gold coming just over this you know horizon so i'm just putting a little bit pure color sort of dabbing it right at the right around that area now it's still it's sort of a stable it's still going to keep running but it's not like a wet run so and anytime like you have something coming down here i usually just wet it it'll it won't dry and make a, a heavy mark for me so okay so I'm just gonna take a little time now and go into my sails and do some, some color in there. And I think, you know, like I want some of this gold color kind of coming into them. So I might take, and, I, and, and it's, you really wanna use as much water as you can. And that's another thing, I'm not sure if you saw that, but I take my brush and I whip out you know, I'm just trying to wash, col get color out of it. And sometimes I flip it behind me. So I'm really just, I want to keep that white, but I just want to add a little, some little color tones. I'm going to take my red here. Maybe I want it lavender, a little pink. Take some of my brilliant pink and just flip some, some other colors into this. And I want, I use a lot of water because I really want them to die back a little bit. Jeff, Ann has a question. Why do you choose Waterford over Arches paper? Um, I, you know, I, I, Arches, I've just had a hard time controlling it, I think. And I started using Bohung paper and I like that better. And so I go from Bohung to Arches, or not Arches, I'm sorry, Bohung to Saunders. Oh, and I just got in the habit because I kept getting good results with the bohong, or I just like the feel of it. So it's maybe that's hard to um, for me to explain. I, does that? Um, it's a little like arches, and that if you do a dry brush, you you it leaves like a nice um, mark. Just gonna get. I just want to green this up just slightly. Wait, wait, too green. Put a little red in it. Okay, some blue. I think I'm gonna go in the background sort of like a blue color. Just gonna get some of these before they drip. And I think I'm, hopefully I got the right thing here. Oh, before I do that, I'm just gonna put some of this color that we have here, adding to it, sort of dulling it I want to go into this and make what would be my reflective color for these. So sort of dry, maybe I'll use some of this pink and a little lavender. Oop, not, not good. <laughs> maybe I'll put a little water, wash that out. I want this a little bit darker than what's here as a reflection. So, but I wanted to put a blue in it so it's just not so, so, okay. Okay, now if I put some water on that, hopefully some of that dullness will uh, Okay, now, now I'm gonna do this. And I'm gonna do some dry brushing back here. Now, there's a few highlights hitting like a boat here. So I, I, I wanna get, leave those. But besides that, I can just go, I'm gonna paint stuff here, but I'm gonna go right, I'm brushing right through it. Some of this is going up into there. So I gave this a little bit time to the edges dry a little bit. So maybe this blue isn't going to crawl into um, what I have going here. So that's why I did this first. 
is just to give me a little time. And I'm not using, it's sort of, I'm not using a ton of water here because if I do, it's going to impede too much. So I like all these little sparkle things and maybe I'll put a little hole up here. Okay. And I'm gonna put a little uh, horizon blue uh, turquoise uh, to do this up here. And then I'm just, just trying to miss these white areas, which is why this is sort of a difficult, um, I think, uh, thing to do here. Jeff, your head is in front of the camera. Oh, okay. Recently. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you, Ralph. See. You can tell that how your position changes depending on the detail. Maybe I might adjust that later so I don't do that again. Okay. So anything in shade, I'm just kind of going right through it. And I like these little bits of light, but now maybe I'm just gonna go through and if there's any I don't like, and I'm, I might darken this up just a little bit. Now, if I don't wanna lose any of these little bits of, of uh, light on things, I can always you know, just splatter a little paint in there and it's still wet, so I think it's gonna accept it and just, you know, it'll just slow down. Okay, so I think we're looking good. Okay. And I might just put a few more a little bit more color into here for these, just a little bit, a feeling of glow in my, my central area here, so. Okay. And I forgot about this back here, so I'm just getting some, some warm, trying to go over this, because it's like a, a deck over here. And maybe I'll carry some of that over here, but I think I'm going to neutralize it just a bit with some lavender is a great color to add to things to sort of gray them up a little bit. And there's a little red. See how I just, I have this puddle here already set and I needed a little red. And I just, so I can add it to this. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through this. And just, you know, maybe I'm just gonna hit my, my lady too and some other things that just to kill the white so that the white in these are, is the most striking. I'm just gonna be careful not to hit any of that. Okay. And this thing, I'm just gonna warm, get some, warmth on this too. And okay, looking good. And then I think this sail over here, I, I forgot to sort of take that down a little bit. So, um, so really, really trying to wet, put some water down on it and I'll put a little gold into it. It's not the, the main attraction these are, so I don't necessarily feel like I need to have uh, so much in it on it. Okay, so when I'm outside, I usually, um, you know, I have a easel and I flip this around to the sun and I let it dry. And, um, but in this case, I do have a couple of blowers that, <laughs> and anytime I want, you know, um, to, if I need something to flow, I do pick my um, pick it up and I move it. Not not so much in this case though. But like if you kind of see it settling somewhere and you want to take it out of that, you know, I just move it. And the easel that I have um, that I work with in plain air, it it just tilts. And so as I'm working, I'll we'll just tilt it one direction or another. So let me see. Um, let me see if Zoom muffles this 
Can you hear me talking? Yes. Okay. It's a little quieter, but not that much quieter. But it's really, really hot. So it, it almost like cooks the color. I don't want it near my brushes, that's for sure. So how are we doing on time? Let's see, I think we've been almost almost an hour, not quite. Almost, okay. So we have a little crawling. I think I dropped something there. And sometimes these little um, happy accidents, once I get into um, doing, this is our middle value. Now remember, I just, this whole section that I did, it, I would consider sort of this, it's all represents light. And so my next layer, I'm gonna be doing this middle value pattern here. And so that's why I want this out to refer to, to help me. So I'll be covering this one big section here all at once. And I want, the reason why I'm drying it, that I want this dry is because I want to, I want to use water, I call it pre-wet and a post-wet. So we're gonna do a, a pre-wet that I'm gonna dry this up here and I'm gonna, and then I'm going to paint on it and I'm gonna do some painting here and then I'm gonna post-wet that section with some clean water. Now I'm gonna use the more noisy one because it seems like it does better when I do both. So just give me a second. Maybe uh, we could take a, a bathroom break at this time too. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Since the, the painting's drying. So we'll take five minutes, folks. And... Okay, all right.
Jeff. Huh? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Why we're on break. Did, did you say it's the very last section that you use the darks to connect, make your connections and things, your dark values when you were going through like the first is the light and then the middle and then then do you get the use the dark values to make your final connections? I, I think, it, you know, I, I'm starting to think of them more like accents that you don't want too much um, darks going on. Like when I first started, I just really, you know, the bottom of a tree, like I just, I, I, I went too hard with so many darks and I'm finding like, if you really do them in select places, it there's sort of like it, like it, it it introduces like more air, more atmosphere into the pieces that, that I've done. Um, let's see, we're, I have one out. So, so essentially what you've done here is uh, an underpainting. Uh, of yes, sure. I mean, you know, in, in oil, they, they make, usually it's, um, you know, to kind of, I mean, I know they always say, oh, and watercolor is to kind of kill your whites, but also you you give it like a, it's almost like a glazing and you can sort of start creating your sense of color, your mother colors, you know, like in this, it's just basically sort of warms and cools, you know, and this, and this, these cools are sort of like when I come down here, I'll start adding some more cobalt on this side and this will, I'll probably leave this pretty, I might dry brush a little overall some of this, but it'll stay about the same. But, um, uh, well, I'm just going back to accents, it's like I put fewer in this and I like, I did this last week and, you know, I didn't go so, so dark here. Like usually that's shadow and I would just like really crank in the dark, but maybe I'll just pick this. But, you know, you can see into it a little bit, you know, and I saved my darkest darks for just like a few places, you know? And I, and I think that's, and like this is, this was really dark, but if I would have put too much dark into that, I think I would have, it would have been overly heavy. Okay, so it's, it's your middle values that you use for your, when you were saying you connect it. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's, I mean, I like using that MVP because it's like, we're all familiar with the most valuable player, you know? So to, to remember that it's your middle value pattern. But the thing is your darks are part of that middle value because, you know, like this was part of my middle value pattern, but I, I just, I, I just went back with my dark and went over that to make it darker but it was part of my middle value pattern. So okay. that's why when I held up, I'm not sure where, where it went now, it's under here. Like your middle value pattern is basically all these values, which is what I depicted in, in this. And I didn't do any of the dark values in this. And when I was taking, uh, I was taking Andy Evanson's workshop and he said a great you know thing, like if you work from a finished, um, like if you go back in here and if I was to make the darks, you're basically chopping up um, some of these big shapes, which you need to see in order to get, uh, re you know, reduce detail and, you know, see the, see the big shape. Like you'll, your brain will go, oh, it's dark there and you have to stop and you have to do something more. But if it's just this one color, you tend to just, you know, go through the whole you know, like you'll have a flow through the whole thing. And, I, and you're, you won't overload your brain with a bunch of detail, so. Thank you. That's a good explanation, thank you. Okay. So, um, okay, so now I'm gonna mix this and um, I wanna use a pretty big brush because I wanna do it pretty quick. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this. I sort of liked it with a little purple in it and a little warmth, a little blue. So I like to use the colors that are already on my palette because um, introducing too many new colors, I think can make, it's, it's disjoints it too, because your brain has to, oh, there's another color, there's another color. And so, um, 
So I like using some of the colors that already are on here. So I just wanna kind of muck, I wanna gray this a bit. It's sort of like a, a halfway between warm and cool. Okay, so now I have a brush I haven't introduced yet and it's this and it's just, uh, it's a synthetic, but it's very wide and I have some clean water behind me. I'm just gonna dip it in there. And this is what I was calling that pre-wet. So I'm just gonna go over this a little bit. Okay, so now when I've done that, remember I was talking about water that's running? Like I have a little time. I mean, I, I just put that on and the water's moving on the paper coming down. And if I was to do whatever I'm gonna do right now, um, and if my paint wasn't thick, it would just be swept away by all that water. So it's almost like it, you have to be kind of intuitive about waiting when to put something on there and how thick your paint's gonna be. So I think I got it right. So let's just go ahead and we'll do it. That's why it's an art, not a science. That's right. <laughs> so maybe I'm gonna take some of my warmer colors too. So I'm sort of changing as I come down. Now, remember, now you can kind of see it now, if I wanted to move more, like if, if I did it too late or my everything was too thick, I could just hit it with some some water up here. I could hold my arm here, hit it with some water. And so maybe some of that, those, that'll come down into this or feed the water that might be here and, and blur that even more. But I think, I think we're okay. I think we can keep going. Um, I'm gonna switch brushes because there's some like smaller um, little thing. Remember I was making some marks just to remind me to, you know, and that's because there's stuff back here. It's like, I wanted it to be like a little city and I'm thickening my paint. I'm going to my dark pile, might be a little thicker. But you're not really painting it directly. You're just suggesting things. I'm just suggesting. So just, right, exactly. I think that's exactly what I'm doing. Just leaving some mark. It's almost like abstraction. And I, and I like to do another thing. I'm gonna dip my, and you can't see, I'm dipping my pinky into my water and I'm just gonna drop, using my nail, I'm just dropping a couple, um, like just to create maybe like a little sense of smoke or something. I could even kind of drag it across a little bit, but it's just, so I'm just kind of breaking up that beautiful pattern and I'll just see what that does. Let's see what the water does you know, with that. So I'm kind of coming down and there's some going to be some boats in the harbor and some other stuff. I want to see where that, yeah, that's, a, I'm about there. And I'm going to blue it up as if to suggest, um, you know, usually white, white boats have sort of a, uh, you know, when they're in shadow, so I'm just kind of making a bunch of little abstract detail here. So kind of closing my eye, I'm squinting as I do, I do that. I bring that, bring that down here. Okay. And so remember how I had some stuff here, I'm just gonna bring down this mast and I'm just going to do the same thing here. This is our pylon thing. Get a warm color, come into this, and there's a boat. I'm just imagining this. I mean, it's imagining a boat being up here at this, you know, and imagining the light hitting the deck. So I'm not going to put that in, but I get to connect all this stuff. And maybe there's some other things back here, some other. So again, I'm just sort of abstracting, but it has a function of, um, oops, I don't know how that happened. I think maybe maybe I touched something. Yeah. So let's just, I'll just go with that and make a few more marks then, bring that, bring that down. Um, so I'm just gonna go in here and this thing's coming down. Just very, uh, just insinuating detail. Okay, good enough. 
And then um, I'm just going to continue across here and just going to get a little more water because I want that to continue just slightly. This, uh, but I'm going to change colors a little bit. Adding a little warmth to it. And okay. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly make um, these lines. Some are close, some are far away. That one was pretty big. Some are angled and some are small. Okay. Seeing a lot of head, Jeff. <laughs> okay, so this is that idea of, of uh, post wet. So now I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna break these up. And you know, when sun comes through something, it's sort of, you know, it takes out some edges and um, so I kind I kind of like that, and it's just like it's like it's busyness. Something's happening over there, and um, but, but you're not hung up on it. It's just but I'm not like hung up on it or something. It's uh... yeah. I could even you know just throw, try and get some clean water. And just even add to that and just sort of let the water do something here. I'm just I'm just kind of hitting a couple, trying to throw some of this color over there too. Just so it's so it as if it's traveling a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my sort of bluer mixture here, and then I'll just cut this in real quick. And now these are a whole bunch of boats and I, it's the same thing. I want to leave a couple things. I missed quite a few. If I miss too many and I want to come back, I'll use gouache. I don't have any problem using gouache for a bunch of things. We're seeing your head, Jeff. Oh, okay, thank you. You know, I just adjusted this a little bit this morning and so I didn't have, usually I try and record some so I know where I'm supposed to be. Okay, so now I'm, I'm down to the shadows of these boats, just about. And I can definitely add a bunch more water. And I'm gonna switch to this brush. I think it's gonna do better um, with that. Now I think I'm gonna, too, I need to mix a bunch of what is gonna be my ocean color. So some, I'm just gonna, I have a serpentine, oh, that's way too much. Okay, into the junk pile. <laughs> it was, when something's wet, I mean, sometimes I'm used to things being a little on the dry side and you gotta uh, get your brush in there. I'm gonna add a little red to that to kind of tamp it down. Maybe I'll take some of this. Coming back, getting some of my cobalt. Uh, it's sort of greenish. I'm looking on the photograph, so I do want some of this, you know, earth it up a little bit. Okay, and now I'm just going to come down and 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 try and do what is like the shadow of these boats. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna take some paint off my brush so I can do some dry brush or it's just some and I like how it looks like you know it's making this sail pop out a little bit and I'm just trying to get some of the um but I don't want to get it near my boat I'm just going to do a couple dry brushes around here I'm going to go into the boat too maybe some I forgot to do it in my initial wash I'm just going to do it now just get something in, in that I'm trying to put it in the shade but not not too much going on and maybe I'll just leave a little 
maybe a, um, a light, maybe I can use that little highlight in that area for the figure. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, you know, my path, it was, I, that, to me, that was sort of one big shape that I sort of ran and I messed with it. I added some to my splatter to it, tried to create some atmosphere, which is what I wanted to do. And it backs these up. But now I want to go into, I think I'm going to kind of come down here and then move into these. Um, so let's see. So maybe I'll just go ahead and start on this and then come down. So these pylon things, they, to me, they have like a little greenish tint. So I'm going to mix a warm with a green to get this. Oops. Did I get close there with my head? <laughs> a little, little difficulty <laughs> feeling. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take up some verted ear because it seems like it's in the shadow here. But it's picking up some of that. Light. And, and I'm putting enough water on this that that's just going to sort of drip down a little bit. So there's like several colors and I'm letting the water sort of go down into it. And it seems pretty separate from this. So I don't, I'm not gonna do too much with this sail connecting, connecting it. But definitely like here, as the sail comes down, like I let those two, these connect, which I think is kind of nice to do. Okay, um, back. I know sometimes I think the talking, it does kind of slow you down <laughs> doing stuff. And this is this boat. I'm gonna go into this figure, like what she's sort of in a gray, like little outfit or something. And I don't think I need anything um, uh, red over here. So I don't wanna, so I'm just, you know, using some burnt sienna some red for her arms. And I'm just gonna go ahead and come down to her legs. And, and all this is wet and it's just sort of blending together. And I'll come back um, and sort of define her in some ways. And she's wearing a dark cap. Okay, and I think there's a person in this, I think we were kind of saying, so I'm just gonna, maybe he or she, I'll put a little, red in as if they're wearing a, a life preserver so but i'm i'm gonna try and um you know this mask coming through like i'm just gonna pull it all the way through here you know and this is the boat in this corner hopefully you can see this i think i might make the boat just go out that way so whatever so i'm trying to indicate that boat. Um, and I could have been, I could have done that first. I almost wish I did, did do some kind of, maybe I might risk it. Um, I might pull some down, but I think I'll give her a little bit to solidify. So maybe I'll stop there. I'll have to come back for that. I think I should have done the light before. So maybe I should do that with these. So that by the time I get there, this is dry. So that's the way I'm thinking. So maybe I'll just let that be. That's still wet here, and I'll still be able to pull those shadows as across as long as that's wet. There's like water beating up at the bottom of that. So and, and the right the right sail is very white. Uh, so you'll be you'll be knocking that back, right? Yeah, I should have knocked that back before I did this. I think that would have been the smart thing. Okay, so these are really important though the shadows in this, and so that's why I was sort of like, oh, do I want to do that right now? but I think it's like time to do them so they get a little uh, dry. Um, now I wanna put a little warmth in them, but I'm gonna use lavender as sort of a base and maybe a little pink. And then, and it's sort of like a one brush stroke kind of thing. And um, I think that looks best. It's like, you know, try and keep it fresh. And I remember, remember I was this one, sail over here I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it better there? Yeah. I, I'm sort of interested in that shape. So, and maybe I'm just going to go a little bit darker. 
Okay. So some kind of a passionate stroke there and amend it a little bit. Maybe I'll push my brush, you know, so it's like we're kind of getting some freshness. Maybe I'll break an edge a little bit, add a little water on my finger and just, just and put a little detail. You know, so there's a variety of me touching that and I'll do the same for this. Oh yeah, I want a little, I want a little light, little, um, you know, so maybe I'm just gonna throw in a little warmth into what I just did. So if it's still wet, hopefully that'll, that'll join in. So going back to my lavender color here, a little warmth in it. Looking at, now I like, I think I'm gonna put, use instead of the lines defining that form, I think I was just trying to use um, dark against the light to do it. So I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side with this. Okay. I could do more, but I think that's, I think I'm. Maybe I didn't need that. So if you don't need something, if you can get some water on it and then, you know, tap it. Maybe I just want to soften the bottom of that. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what I need to do. And so sort of soften that edge of that. Okay. So, and then let's go back to this where we have all this mixture. So everything's sort of the same. I'm gonna add a little warmth because maybe the, some of that warmth is coming through this. I'm just gonna go kind of join connecting uh, the person with the, the landscape. So, and then just taking this down a little, as we were saying, I don't want this to over compete. So just making kind of some blue, this is still wet down here and I'm just gonna pull it across and there's some other shadows coming and there's this boat shadow here, the sail shadow. And I like how it's all kind of, I'm connecting this side of the composition with um, this over here. So I think that's, that works out well. And if I want it darker, I'll just add to it um, some water. Okay. And okay, so I'm just gonna move across here. So the first thing it hits is our little guy here uh, and he has a red hat. So a lot of this is sort of little, you know, touching work, little hat, and he's wearing a blue vest. It re really slows you down working on figures in this landscape. Because look at me, I'm having to make a bunch of colors. Oops, kind of overshot that. Okay. And I'm gonna go into our main figure kind of, and I think I'm gonna give her a red shirt. But I'm gonna make it dark on one side. So, you know, she pops out against these sails. Did I lose you guys? Are you still there? <laughs> yep, we're here. <laughs> okay, going into, uh, her shorts, going back in for this arm, and some red, again, burnt sienna, her leg, just trying to push her hip, pushing her hip out a little bit, remember, and, and it's, okay. And when you're doing it uh, all wet like that, it'll still sort of connect, everything will connect to that. 
Now I'm just going to go from her to the boat behind her, which um, I'm doing. Maybe I'm just going to go for a lavender. So I, I don't want it to be to compete color wise with her. So there's a whole bunch of things now that are connecting. And then the person in the boat, again, some red. You know, I might just uh, add some red oops, into this, like make her, make her bleed out a little, uh, not literally, but you know, just so that there's like, she connects to the sail. So I just wet that area just to, to mess that up. And I'll just go into, this is our person. So some cobalt, just cha changing the color up. And then I'll go for some red and burnt sienna for her face. And maybe he's wearing a hat. And this isn't like hand doing things. And I'm just gonna go right from there to this mass for that. So even though I'm dealing with a whole bunch of little things, they're all sort of connecting. Um, which I think is important to this little mast. Trying to make these lines. I'll warm that up. And make, trying to make some detail. I'll use anything like um, uh, uh, more calligraphy kind of uh, with a finer brush. I'll wait to do um, later. I'll get the big stuff first. So coming down, so we did him and I think now I can do, um, see I'm looking, I'm just trying to do connecting him with this area here. So trying to get this edge and his, he's like, his, he's, his butt is right up against this. So I'm just connecting him to his legs and his body to this uh, side here. I just wanna make sure I get that. And then I think I wanna try to dry brush that. And uh, this is, to me, this area is sort of unimportant right now. And I'm just gonna uh, squirt it down and let it sort of um, soften up a bit. Okay, so taking this back, I'm looking at this photo or just how it touches that boat. So it's all very dark in here. So, but I'm not going for my darkest dark either yet. Like this is still sort of a middle value. I'm still sort of connecting all these things. I think there's like another little boat or something here. So I'm just gonna make some nonsense, uh, not sharing what's going on. And so lavender up into this. And I'm just going to put a little uh, edge on this boat up here. So just start still going through. There's a lot of detail here, so sorry. There's some seats and we have our, I'm just gonna get some neutral chin. I think I can go pretty dark on this thing. Our little, um, and I left a, tried to leave a highlight for it, our motor. I'll just put that down. And it's like, there's a shadow that sort of comes under the boat there, so. This, you know, what's really important is when you're going across here is to put the reach into your puddle and put a lot into this so that that way things connect. Um, okay, I want to look at that dark space coming down, coming down. I'm gonna, just going to paint some of the what looks like light hitting this. My eyes are definitely jumping around. Gonna get some vertidir, some lavender to do this. And two, it's good if you get enough, you can just do it one stroke 
and you're done. Like if you do too many, um, I think like it, the watercolor looks nicer if you can just juice your brush up and just go straight across and you're done. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a little moisture to the bottom of this. I want all this wet so that when I do the blue, it connects. So I still have my, this right here, I still have to do. So let me move that over. So I'm just trying to check, oh, I think I need to do this. I'm gonna go back to a little lavender, sort of a dirty lavender color that I'm making. Okay. And there's a person in that boat. So I'm just gonna make burnt sienna, some red, kind of dirty it up a little bit. And maybe this person's doing something with their arm. So maybe I can make some, you know, some kind of motion or something, something happening there. Okay, and I'm just gonna put a little darkness underneath that boat. Some little, little details. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. So now I'm just going to go for not, I think this size brush and pick up some of my pigment. I'm going to add some more um, cobalt. I want to change the value as we come from here forward. Change it in what way? Uh, darker. And um, I want to go, this is sort of a cool, to me, it looks like there's more cerulean sort of, or uh, cobalt in it. And as I come here, I'm going to try and go more ultramarine cobalt. So put a little, put, I put a little red in it just to take the, um, there's some of my green, just so it's not so, so pure. It's, it's a little thick, so I'm just gonna take it down a little bit with water. I wanna do some dry brushing too, so I might also use this brush, which is smaller, it'll help me out there. And a lot of times I see, on that far away part, I will cool it down again. Um, here's like a little mistake, so I'm just gonna go right over it. And I'm just gonna, do a couple striations here. And this darkness is gonna help bring this out again, which is sort of what, you know, what I wanted. Um, okay. Um, okay, here, here I am. So maybe I'll make another one. And I think I'm going to soften the back side of it. So I'm going to add a little water to it. I'm going to add a little water to that as well. Okay. Okay. So switching brushes. I think it was this one. And maybe I'll just uh, throw a little this color in there. See what oh, looks really. Maybe it was this one. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like, how dark do I want this? And it seems really dark. But I think that will help. So I'm coming right up to the edge. I'm defining the light. So the darker I make this, and I'm trying to go soft so I keep some of these little bits of light down here. I'm not sure if you can see them. So some, some are gonna come in, some not. I think that's a hole there. Coming over to on this side. And definitely want that cobalt because I see it in my a piece, sort of linking it up to this side, but I'm, I want to leave some of those light highlights. I like those two as if in a wave. But some are going to go through, some don't. Keep that dark. Okay. 
So this is sort of what that I meant by, I wanted some sparkle happening. Now I'm just going to go in, that's still wet, this sort of dried out, but now I'm going to make the uh, reflection of the boat. So whatever it was before, I want to go a little bit darker and I want to add sort of what's going on in the water, which is a tiny bit of green. So maybe that'll work. Maybe a little more warmth than that. And this is our sail coming down. And then I have this boat and it has more red in this. So, more red. Sometimes if it's uh, thick enough, I use my uh, nail to kind of go through and um, that was could have been a little bit drier if it's if it has to be I think on like a damp not too wet because if it's too wet it just go whatever you do it just fills back up but and maybe I don't like all of that okay and remember there's this thing too it can bring down Okay, that has to dry before I can put my dark dark in that third go at it. But, um, and then we have our lady and she's wearing, gonna switch brushes, go smaller. And I'm just gonna add some red. And I'm just gonna break her up as a, a, a you know, as a wave, you know, chop her up a little bit. <laughs> and here's that person leaving some of these little bits. I think, you know, one of the most important parts of when you're just trying to define a boat is just putting a little something right where the boat hits the, um, the water. And these little sailboats they have, and if you can see in this one, it's like, it just comes up a little bit there. And I think I want that to go somewhat soft. And so I'm gonna add a little to that. So I'm trying to make a little violet. Just so that's kind of like all, all sort of goes together. And this part of the boat to me seems a little darker too. So I'm just going to add a little to this end and put wash out my brush and then I'll just pull it through with clean water. But these darks are really important. And this is a nice brush because I can just kind of stick it in pure paint and I can kind of come in and I can, you know, put it in there. Now the reflection, if this is dry enough and I can, if I can get some really thick paint, I can put that reflection in now. Because I didn't do this too long ago. Okay, so. Now, this is all sort of wet. I'm just trying to think, is there anything I want to add to this while it's still wet? Um, like, I, I know I don't want to go, maybe I can, I'm just, I just don't know. Oh, can you hear the, I think our, um, someone's going to mow a lawn. <laughs> Doesn't sound too intrusive for from here. It's not too bad. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm jumping, this is all wet, so I'm just going to jump over here and do the person that's in this sailboat. And maybe I'm just going to darken that up a bit too and get, get a bottom of it so it sort of has, and maybe a darker side. So it's just, it's recognizable enough. Okay. Okay, so um, I need to dry this really quick so I can do that. How are we doing on time? I think we're doing pretty well. Let's pretty see. Good. I'm, I'm like very 20... best, uh, an hour and 35 minutes. So uh, okay. let's okay. Uh, have another hour, maybe a little more. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's more than I thought. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was hoping to save some time for, for questions at the end. Oh, yes. Okay. That, that sounds great. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll jump around and do some of this, 
maybe I'll jump over here. Like I just want that to dry a little bit so I can go back in with darks, but I can come back over here and that's dry. This is dry here. So if there's anything anywhere else, I think I'm just gonna jump jump back over here. So I'll taking this brush, I'm just gonna go add some of my darker accents over on this side and ultramarine and I, and I don't want it to be anything too radical. I'm looking at it over here, over here. And this is like one of those tricky parts with a, like the camera is gonna tell you it's really dark, but I need to judge how dark it needs to be just for my purposes. And I don't want it to distract from the main show. So I just wanna add a few, what I would call like dark accents. And I can put the sail in too. Um, going, kind of trying to make another, uh, you know, a really good go to combination is cobalt for like these sort of a gray cobalt, alizarin, and then some burnt sienna. And so I'm just going to try and make the sail here. And I'm just, and so I, I messed my stroke up and I, I, I like broken lines and especially over here to the side, I don't want anything to dominate. Like I want this to dominate. So I, I messed, I messed it up a little bit and let me get my little, I guess it's time I can break this out. This is one of those, uh, Italian brushes, Tintoretto and it's 1408, I think, but yeah. It's really nice. I mean, just um, for doing this kind of stuff. So I don't want too much going on. And maybe, um, well, maybe I'll come back and do that later. I'm trying to look at this, my background here, and do I have it low enough on the horizon? And I wonder if I could even go, you know, put some, a few more things in just they're just a little bit darker, but just bringing, bringing that down a little bit. So I kind of, I kind of like that. So it's just pretend boats, um, like as if there was a dock over there, but I, I do like the little bit of darkness right there. Okay. And I'm just going to try and do some shadows coming off the, the boat and this pylon. I'll go under here. And then I'm just going to go um, to my watercolor here. And I'm just going to extend this down. You know, it's like if I want to, too, I see how this color, I don't have that down here, but maybe I will add a couple waves to this, you know, just to bring this forward even more than I had it. So I'm just trying to make some, and these strokes, I try and go soft and go, kind of go thick. And this is that really tough thing where you don't want anything too same, same. You know, I don't want, you know, nature's not going to, uh, you know, give me the perfect, uh, you know, I don't want to go boom, boom, boom like that. So I want to pick where I'm doing this. Now, that's not still too dry there. So I'm just going to stay away from that. Still, I have to stay away from it. But I like how this brought this up to us a little bit and you know again like if i want to sort of soften anything i would add you know adding water to it i think helps okay um i'm gonna add a little texture so i did did something over there i'm gonna come over here i'm just gonna add a little texture to this thing 
And I think I'm going to darken the shadow underneath here a bit. So I'm sort of doing these, that last accent stuff. And I want to do some, I, I don't know exactly, I, I've never I've been sailing once, but there was no wind. So I'm just doing what, what I'm thinking might be some, some lines. And to me, this is that variety thing. Um, Like I'm trying to make a little, oh, I, I forgot some of those rudders. Little details. Yeah, little detail stuff. The rudders. It's gonna try and break that a little bit so it's not so strong. And then I'll just bring something of it down into this, into the reflection. Yeah, it seems like it might be darker. Yeah, I mean, I think as, you know, the more time I spend in this area, the more I'm accentuating, you know, what, you know, I wanted to, which is, you know, these, these sales and the people and the stuff, even if there's like some stuff in this, you know, maybe I'll use a bright, you know, a brighter sort of color you know, as if there's something sitting in there and um, just to sort of bring out the most, the more of it. And maybe I'll just do a little line underneath this edge. You know, anything I can do to develop these objects more than that, more than that. Um, and maybe I'll go for, get my, my smallest guy out. Um, I'm still looking at this. It's still pretty wet, but I think I, maybe I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and do it. That way we can get that sort of going. And then it's sort of more okay to go with details. Um, what, what I really love to do a thing where I put like a dark uh, pigment in. And so I'm just going to use some ultramarine uh, and um, that's a burnt umber. So that's definitely making a nice, really nice um, dark for me. So it's almost like the intersection of all these lines. This is where I'm sort of punching it up. And I'm just going to take a little of that um, darkness out. And I'm going to run something over here. And there's all this other little detail on the dock that I guess I can put in, but I don't know what these things are called. They tie the boat up to them. And oh, tapping my, I don't want it so dark when I come out here. So I'm just doing some of that. I might just mess that up with my finger a little bit. Um, it looks darker to me. So I might actually add a little burn. Just a little burnt sienna, but in my warm mix over here, I might add a little frost, um, alizarin crimson. I think I need to make this just a, a tad bit darker. Okay, so now I'm going to do the really super dark reflection right here. So I'm really going to darken this up, a um, little phthalo. Ultramarine. Um, maybe I'll put some some red in this. A little green. That don't want too much of that. Take some of this. Okay, really, really dark because it really looks dark in the photograph, but I like it dark. I mean, I sort of want that to happen. And I'm just kind of going in with my brush kind of breaking up, creating like another like level of water reflection here. I mean, really this is sort of sky reflecting in the water, these, these darker marks. And this is, this is definitely the dock. And 
and I think I'm just going to let it sort of die off there. So, and I'm looking anywhere else, even back in here, I think I could do a little bit more. I'm just looking wherever I can add that this, this darkness to, but that really helps this come out, which is, you know, that's sort of what I wanted. So, okay. I think I need to fat that down a little bit. So, um, some vertidere, a little pink. I'll warm it up with some of this. And Boy, it's such a it's such a guessing game. I'm just trying to think because I the pictures don't represent this, um, so I, I, I'm I'm having to sort of make up the color that this would be, but I just know I don't want it to be too harsh compared to this. So I'm just toning it down a little bit so it sort of drops to the back. Okay, so. <laughs> What about the water that's in between the group of three boats and the boat to the right? Uh, is that tying the boats together, do you think? Or do you want to darken that? Oh, I think I might do a couple like dry brush strokes for that. Yeah. And it's sort of in my, my cooler section there. So I want to use Um, so, so much matters whether you get the right consistency. Well, that's what I'm doing, I'm taking a little out, maybe add a little more water until you think you're going to have what's right in the brush to do this. I, I like it. I, I think I'd like to do it over here, but I like the contrast of this here. So I don't want to mess that up too much. Oops. And, and maybe some of that helps bring, actually it sort of fades that edge and maybe I could bring that back with uh, something or maybe not. Maybe I'm just gonna add some, some strokes through here too. Okay. Good call, Ralph, thank you. <laughs> okay, so now it's sort of, to me, it's like small brush time going into characters and spend the most on the central ones and the least amount of time on the ones that are on the edge, just to keep the more, most focus here. So um, that just means I'd be kind of going into shading one side of her hat. Um, maybe even um, adding more, a little bit more shading to her outfit here. And maybe a neutral tint. And it's like, I'm what I'm taking is almost like pure paint. It's There's a little water in the brush. And so it's more of a, a, a dry brush application. And coming to the, the bottom of, of this this character here and making, you know, sort of link, you know, keeping him linked to the edge there. And I think this might be, I'm just gonna try and with my finger scrape where um, his legs were crossing there and then I'll fill him back in. I use uh, June Briant number two, a lot of times for skin highlights. <clears throat> and if you put a little red in it, a little Lisbon, a little burnt Santa, and mix a little of that uh, June Briant, you get a nice, it's, you know, <clears throat> a nice uh, skin color. Okay. So, and I kind of like um, the highlight that he has right on his shoulder. I do have some titanium white in my palette, and I do use it if I want to really kick in like a highlight of someone. And, I, and the June Briant number one really works well too. 
So, um, I think I put a hat on someone. Oh, this person. I'm going to darken their head a little bit. Okay. And there's more gear and stuff in this boat than I was able to get. And, you know, too, if I want to accentuate anything, um, I always look around, like if I wanted to add red in a, another place, I do have a couple pops of it um, in a few places. But mainly at this stage, I start to like, it, it's almost like a more contemplative stage of, okay, what do I need to do? Like what's missing or how do I balance this? And I just want to add some more highlights that I lost here. So sort of like dry brushing them in, like nothing too heavy. Just, I think it's just to help define like shapes and stuff. So, you know, it's giving people enough information so they know what's there. And some of these other shapes I might have uh, kind of messed up or I, I didn't cut around well. And if I want them to, they, if, if they don't look right, I'll just go ahead and sharpen them up a little bit. Um, you know, one thing I think I could go back and do um, at this point is two that I haven't done. It's just the bottom of these boats. And, and I'm just gonna take, so this, again, this is sort of where it entered that third stage of dark accents. And I don't want it to compete with any of this but um, I do want to kind of get some indication of a little bit more going on back here. And I might do... Um, just do a couple more like close, close things to us just to, just a few more. Just to indicate some detail over there, I think that would be okay. So, I mean, it's really at the point where I'd be, you know, I'm starting to think about, you know, I'd be stopping, I, if I was out in the wilderness <clears throat> I'd say I'm good and I'll, and I'll review back in the studio. Um, I think, I think I could go back into here. I see, I'm not sure if it's a life jacket, but I see like a color. Um, splatter. Just add, adding some blue splatter into that shadow. It's still wet, so I think it's going to be okay. So I, usually when I put a color somewhere, I do sort of look if I need to put it somewhere else just to, so it's not so by itself. Like even with the red, I put some over here, put a little dab back there, put some down here. And I was thinking about like maybe running some along the edge there uh, on the side of the boat just to have it almost like hidden in a few places. And, and, that, and it, that's in shadow, so it's very subdued. It doesn't compete with that at all, but I think it makes um, the repetition of it, I think helps that. So, so any, how are we doing for questions? I'll, I'd I, love I think to answer. we have time for, for questions here. And there were several yeah. people who were interested in your figures and how you make them not be stiff. Uh, personally, I'm very impressed. Do you go out and, and just paint or sketch figures? No, well, I have, um, like I practiced just on the iPad and I was just uh, training doing them fast and I just would just do them in the sketchbook and do a few, but, but I always do, when I do that, it's more of a, I think the more you draw and it's like your, it becomes muscle memory or your brain learns the in and out of a, of a figure. And so when you have to do it quick, I think it's, um, 
it's a little bit easier. But I really think it's that for getting that first mass, whatever angle that's going to be, and don't make the head too big. It's better if it's too small. And then where it's like balancing that figure. And so if you just look at figures, if like this, she's perfect. If I can, I don't know if you guys can see her. I like but, your figure better than her. Oh. <laughs> well, I put an arm out. Yeah. Um, just, but I just love how her head and her, and she's all that weight is on that center foot. And if you right. look at a lot of people, depending on the angle that you're looking at them and what they're doing, you know, people that are walking tend to be leaning, you know, and I think it's kind of fun like this. I like the cross leg of this one. Um, maybe what I could do too is just pick this up and show it closer. Or maybe I can zoom in. How about I do that? I can just reach up here. And... So you can get like a better, closer look. Yeah. But sometimes I think with a lot of these things, um, it's the, uh, you don't want to put too much detail and you want water to do things that you can't do. Like I, for instance, this area over here, like no way am I going to be able to make a little village or something, but you know, you can make atmosphere and watercolor. I mean, I kind of like the way what happened here. I don't know if it's in light well, or you can see it, but I like those little, I threw some of this color over in here. I kind of like how that worked and it's purely a watercolor abstracting. It's, it doesn't look like it's real. You know, these almost look like rockets going off or something, I don't know. <laughs> But I, I do like just that, like, it's a little bit of atmosphere or smoke. I have a question. If, yeah. Um, so when you're out in the field painting, you don't have three photographs to work off of, right? No. So. Um, I keep looking up at a changing scene. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So you pretty much have to visualize the finished painting before you start i you know <clears throat> i you know i never visualize it's almost like a bet like you know when i when you do when you do this kind of sketch i um i think it helps you make a better bet and it, it helps it helps guide you to that vision but whatever you do, I, I, I never see exactly what I want to paint. I mean, I, you know, what, I see what grabs me in a scene. Like I see the boats when I came to this, I see those boats and I know that's what I want to paint. How, and then I try and figure out like, how am I going to paint that? And I got in the best spot and all of a sudden all the kids came. Um, but I, um, but I think it's like you find the design, the more you deal with it. And I, I realized that I was painting something and I was thinking, I didn't see the design, but once I started sketching it, I realized, oh, here's my three graces. Oh, here's my big, my medium, and there's my small. And then, you know, that thing with the lines that I was talking about, like I discovered that as I was uh, drawing it. I discovered how I want to make these, I, I can do something with these lines, you know, do, doing fitting it into a radial composition where I, I'm converging the lines at one place. So I think it's like you, for me, I start on a pathway towards a design, but I never see it until I start sort of giving my brain information. And that's what I think um, sketches are. They're like giving your, feeding your brain information, like for a puzzle piece, like how do you solve a puzzle? You have to look at the pieces, you try fitting certain things and oh, that doesn't fit. Let me try this one, it needs this. So, but you have to see all the pieces in order to make that happen. Okay. So, so in, in your sketch, you have three values of gray. I can't see if there's values. I, just, I, re I really just, this is meant to be a middle value pattern and so I just used this was really just supposed to be one value okay and now I could I could go ahead and put in um 
I already used it now, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I could take, you know, I could say, oh yeah, I really want to make this dark here and I'm going to make it dark, you know, and do sort of what I did here. But as soon as I do that to this sketch, I'm sort of break, I'm putting more puzzle pieces in for my brain to see. And the whole objective of this for me was just seeing these big shapes and knowing what things I could sort of connect together. So remember, I came through here, sort of a pathway, and I practiced doing this on this. So it, so it actually um, was a little practice session for me too. And I thought, oh, that worked well. I like that. So I'm going to do it in that thing. So I had a little practice. And then if you remember, I moved down here and then I did those shadows across and it kind of brought me into here. I did skip to put some of this in, which I think these were really important. And I, I could have made them a little darker too, but, and that might be something I think on reflection, I might go back and maybe put, you know, looking at some of these values and how sharp that is, you know, which because would be sort of just, I could re, I could re-wet that a little bit and take, you know, maybe, yeah, I, I like them really white or really lighter because they they really stand out uh, against the background. Or just you know, but but that's the kind of thing like I think about you know like. And, and when should, do you when do you know you're done? Do you just like sit I, sit on it for a couple of days and then I go do. back and I, look at it? Yes, I do. I get away from it and I like forget about it for a little bit, which a lot of times. Sometimes it bugs me and I want to get back to it and finish because it's like a puzzle. I don't know. It's like I want to solve it. But it really does help to sort of, you know, put it, pack it away, put it up in the studio, and I put it up like behind me. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. You can um, No. You probably can't. Um, it's probably in my picture from my computers. I'm not sure. Anyhow, over, I have a white wall, a little space. I pin them up. And then I get, I can get far away from them. And, you know, I have a little bit of a bad back. And so I keep my easel and everything up really pretty high. Um, a lot of times I've watched uh, Avaro and other people and they have theirs really low. But when I do that, I'm hunched over. And at the end of my session, I'm like, oh, I can't do that too much more, you know? So but because I put my easel up high, I don't get a good um, distance from it as I paint sometimes. So I like getting away from it, I like walking in the room fresh and then looking up. And what's the first thing I see? What, what's, you know, I think you're always working against your, your brain and your expectations too. It's like, you know, it could have been the first thing I, I thought was important was the sales but then when you paint it it could be something else emerged and you need to go with the flow i think for that do we have any other questions i have one yeah this is this is donna um Hi, i donna. love i love how you <laughs> slash the water through the uh, background masts and I was wondering if you had used that with any other kind of background, like maybe palm trees or anything like that. You know, I haven't. That was sort of, I mean, I've, I did it. Um, do you, I don't know if you saw, but it was the, the piece that I put in the plein air show that I did it to some masks and that. And that was sort of, you know, I was out there um, when I was painting it. And it just occurred to me that I could do that to break them up a little bit. They're a little, little stiff. I think I did it in that. Um, I think some people use that for their reflections too in the water. Oh, oh, like I could do these doing this down here in the foreground and then go <laughs> through it and break it. Yeah, like they bring a straight line down and then they slash it. Oh, back, oh, and they slash it. Back and yeah. forth. Back right, and forth. Right. Yeah. Nice. But thank you so much. That was very, very good. Very I'm fantastic. Very impressed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <Okay>. Exactly. Well. <laughs> yes. 
Um, so while this demo is fresh in our mind, if we, you know, Jeff has given us the 101, if we had him back for the 201 session, um, Jeff, what would you suggest we do to, you know, kind of build on to what you've said here? What, what did you feel like you didn't have time to go into in depth, like maybe more nuances about water or what? I think the stuff that's nuanced is sort of just, um, you know, like I gave, I think I gave you the, the two, what did you call it? The 1.2 and 1.1, but I gave you, uh, giving a full demonstration like this is showing you my advanced stuff in a sense. And I think, I mean, to go back would be to do like a study of just something close up, you know, or, or like do more, um, more studies because this is sort of like, this is the culmination of all that studying I've done, like happens here, all that experience. And I think um, it's the experience stuff that allows you to do this, like the more you paint. And um, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> yeah, I, well, clearly yeah, um, I was thinking as you went along, my gosh, there's so many things. I mean, you repeat some things I know, but to keep them all present in mind as you go along to incorporate them, you know, that's where the experience comes in. Yeah. So I, I, I liked your land, your uh, land based painting, the one of Old Town. I thought that was really nice. I think we should probably have you back to do a, uh, you know, a, a street scene or something like, like that. Oh. What would you all know about that? Do you mean this? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's again, very, very atmospheric, very impressive. Uh, like, I feel like I do better outside because um, my observations like this, I guess too, it's like I wanted to do, I didn't want to just do, this was just so blue. It just felt like I was, I, and I wanted more color. And a lot of times I feel like, you know, color is one of the things that the camera really doesn't pick up um, for me. Like, I feel like there's more. And, and I think, you know, the, the reason why is just because your, our eyes adjust, our pupil expands and contracts, and we're able to see into shadows, so we see more color. And uh, and that just has one shot. I guess HDR, HDR or HD cameras get more of that, more information. But, uh, um, yeah, yeah, but here, I felt like I got a lot of information in being at that scene, so. Yeah, yeah. I think you made a, a great point in that uh, getting in the extra colors because the one cell boat scene you just put up and you said, well, there's just so much blue, there's not that much color. And that's what I, I get puzzled with when I see a scene, I'm like, yeah, it's just all like sand and water, you know, blue and, and sand colored. And how do I get all these pretty colors and nuances in it? You, to you, you got to get up at 5 a.m. and. <laughs> Um, even that doesn't always work and that's I would like to talk more about that how to take a picture and edit it you know or create from that picture and a paintable picture right I, I'm, I'm I have a lot of trouble I have a lot I, of trouble with that because I am first a, a photographer and more recently a painter mm -hmm. and I have all these fabulous photos and I've got all these boat scenes but somehow they just don't seem I have to alter them like what you showed us today and I'm not quite sure how to do that well you know one of the things that I did is um uh, I'm just think I'm just trying to pull some things that I practice um and this is like skill building stuff, but like I'll do like just washes of stuff like this. And because I want to learn my colors and learn, and I'm still, I'm still working on it, learn what, which ones go. And, and so I'll get like pictures and I'll just do a wash from a picture or I just do it out of my mind just to see like, oh, I like that. I'm going to remember that. And I even put some on my, um, my phone, like I'll take a picture of these, or you know, it might even be someone else's work, like just mm -hmm. so I can I can pull from their colors. And so, and once you get the like the mother colors in, like you can almost maybe follow a color sense, like just don't veer, you know, like when I mean mother color, I guess I'm talking about the 
they're like big puzzle pieces. Like this is, there's a, a lot of warmth here that I put in. And then there's a lot of this blue color. So I'd say like there's, I, there's a few. And then I have some accents, but the lion's share is this and the blue. I mean, there's a little purple in this I put, but it almost sort of goes with this catty corner right. here. So if, if we had another workshop and like, let's say we had five or 10 minutes to like, okay, here's six, six pictures, six photographs. What's good on the, how would you change it? How would you, you know, or this one, forget this, this would make a good one, you know, just so we could get a sense of how to look at things differently. Oh, like, like how to, how to compose a painting from, or, or like if you right. showed me six photos, yeah um, how would you like compose? what how would i how would i improve upon this yeah like uh, uh this one's too blue i would put in a yellow sky or this or that or this one is needs some background stuff or this one's too this one's got too much background how would you simplify you know it's like how do we right, start right. thinking about how to take these things that yeah. we see even if it's not a photo even if we just go down to the water there's just too much information and well, you know, how do we pull the key elements or combine from one, you know, this is a beautiful key element. How do we take other supporting one actors? Guy, one guy said something to me once he said, every, every painting about, is about one thing. And so to answer your question, I'm trying to simplify your question because you're, you're, you're seeing all that complexity and how do I simplify it? And I'm telling, and, and he was telling me, well, your painting's about one thing and you know what that, you know, and, and it's like, it, and to me that it's about this. So this instructs you like the thing that grabs you, this instructs you about those other questions you had. So if I put all this stuff in, it would compete with this and you wouldn't see this, it, this wouldn't be as strong. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. And if I, and so if you're you just really, had that, it wouldn't be enough. It's all these other things pointing to it and the little background things that also make it. Um, so there's, it could be too, like too simple too, you know, it's, I don't know. It could be too, I always go on the complex side. I'm, I'm with you in that, like, I always have a, I have a tough time because I think, oh, that's nice. I like that. Oh, right. I like this. <laughs> But I think you have to ask the, the important question is, does it help feed this? And a lot of times I do big, medium, small because I sort of like an asymmetric balance. And I thought like, if I didn't have this in there, um, it might, I guess if I crop this in a bit, maybe that would have been okay. Like this would have been enough, but this was too much space not to have something here. You know, it would be sort of lopsided or something. There wouldn't be a good symmetry. So. So again, I'm using the, the stuff that's most important to make decisions about where I put the frame and what I include. So again, it sort of feeds back into um, your design is a function of what grabbed you. Why don't, why don't we save this for another, another session? Definitely, we want to have you back, Jeff. Um, I, think, I think I would like to see us uh, say each of us who are interested in composition and in what to do with a, a certain type of piece, maybe send one or two photographs uh, to me and I would send them on to Jeff. And then we could talk about them, how to focus in on what's really important on a particular uh, image and, and how you would approach it. And then maybe we could take one and use it as an example and say, okay, here's where we, how we'd go for the next step. Um, yeah. that'd be great yeah yeah so and maybe we could even do sketches or notes or you know a lot of a lot a process that i use a lot too um is thumbnails you know and a thumbnail i know it's it, it sounds so like oh god he's not gonna be he wouldn't have us do thumbnails but <laughs> but um what I think is sort of interesting about thumbnails is you sort of like, um, can you guys see that okay? Yes. Yeah. It's like you break it down. Like if I was gonna do a thumbnail of what I just painted, here, let me back this up just a slight, oh, so you can see both. And I had a Sharpie, but, oh, here it is. 
Okay. So the thing about like, to me, like a thumbnail is it, it, it forces you to, like I'm, I'm doing this very quickly, right? It's like, you're just putting in the basic things that are gonna be part of, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, like that's almost like it of, of this, this. And you can do a bunch of these really quickly. And like, what if I, what if I wanna try something like this and I'm like looking at this, you know, I'm looking at this now, you know, maybe I'll, I'll you know, it's like I can do another configuration of this design and maybe instead of this boat being here, I put it up there, you know. But quickly, you can you can go through your options really quickly. And you well, can why don't we try one. that in, in another session? I don't know exactly when that would be. Uh, I've got several other requests out for artists to provide us uh, demos for. So give me a little bit of time. And in the okay, meantime, yeah, that's people, fine. people I'm, can- I'm send here. Uh, photos <laughs> or images that they want to, you know, try to work towards, and uh, we can get together with you again. That sounds great. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds thank good. you. Well, thank so you very much. much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Chef. It's always a great, pleasure. Great demo. Thank great. you so much.